The Knights Hospitaller was a medieval Catholic military order founded in 1113 AD with the full name of Knights of the Order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem. After their base was relocated to Rhodes in the early 14th century AD, the order's members were often called the Knights of Rhodes and when they moved again in 1530 AD, this time to Malta, they were subsequently known as the Knights of Malta. The original purpose of the order was to provide aid and medical care to Christian pilgrims to the Holy Land, but it soon became a military order which acquired extensive territories in Europe and whose knights made significant contributions to the Crusades in Iberia and the Middle East. The Knights Hospitaller, identified by their distinctive white eight-pointed cross on a black background, participated in many other campaigns besides, notably those involving the Byzantine Empire. The order still exists today in several modified forms in many countries worldwide, ranging from the Roman Catholic Sovereign Military Order of St. John to the Volunteer St. John's Ambulance Brigade. Foundation and Independence The order was first established at the Hospital of St. John Indiana Jerusalem circa 1080 AD, or even earlier, by a group of merchants from Amalfi in Italy. The John it was originally dedicated to was the 7th century patriarch John the Almsgiver, but he was later replaced as patron by the more universally known and more popular Saint John the Baptist. At the hospital, which had two branches, one for men and another for women, charitable aid was offered to pilgrims in the Holy Land, especially the ill and poor, although there were even some non-Christians amongst its patients. The hospital was run under the auspices of the Benedictines monks of the Latin Church of Santa Maria Latina in Jerusalem and then, in 1113 AD the organization was officially recognized as a religious order by Pope Paschal II, R. 1099 to 1118 AD. In the same year, its first master, the Blessed Gerard, was officially appointed and its members recognized as monks. Following the capture of Jerusalem by Western armies in the First Crusade, 1095 to 1102 AD, the order was reorganized and made more militaristic from 1120 AD by the then master Raymond Dupuy. Between 1135 and 1154 AD the church granted the order independence from any local religious authority. The hospitalers, as they would become known, eventually ran most of the hospitals in the Holy Land and even started to build them in Europe, one of the earliest being in Utrecht in 1122 AD. The hospital at Jerusalem was, of course, the most famous, and its 75 by 40 meter, 250 by 130 feet, building could accommodate over 1,000 patients. Such was the respect from the Muslims for the institution that even when Saladin, Sultan of Egypt and Syria, are 1174 to 1193 AD, conquered Jerusalem the hospitalers were allowed a year to shut it down and move patients away. The gradual establishment of command posts, commanderies, across Europe ensured the order a steady supply of funds, materials and recruits. Generally, the outposts fed one-third of their revenue back to the order's headquarters. By the second half of the 12th century AD, the order had established itself as a reliable source of well-armed and well-trained knights immensely useful to crusader armies and the newly established Christian states of the Latin East. Organization and Recruitment The leader of the order was the master who was elected by a committee of brother knights and who held the position for life. The next most important position was that of Grand Commander, the man responsible for administration, supplies, and weapons. The marshal looked after all military and disciplinary affairs. Other senior officers included the constable who commanded the knights, of which there were several hundred at any one time, and the much larger number of mercenaries the order regularly employed, the admiral who commanded the order's ships, mostly based at Marseilles and Cyprus, the master esquire in charge of horses, the gonfanonier or standard bearer, and the various castellans, the individual commanders of the larger hospitaller castles. High-ranking non-military brothers included the conventual prior, the most senior ecclesiastical figure, the hospitaller, chief of the hospital's dash, and the treasurer. Below these figures were a vast army of administrators looking after everything from clothes to the funerals of brothers. In the 12th century AD, France proved an especially fruitful recruiting ground and the order came to be dominated by warriors from that region. The hospitalers were also popular in Bohemia and Hungary where, as elsewhere, 
any young man keen for a mix of monastic living and military adventure could join. Although no particular social status was required, criminals, those in debt, or ex-members of other military orders could not join. Recruits were expected to live a life of piety, chastity, obedience, relative poverty, and to eat and sleep communally. Besides income from new recruits and cash donations, the order generated money from the estates it owned, olive oil and sugar cane being notable profit makers. In addition, merchants were compelled to pay levies when passing through hospitaler-held territories. War booty and the acquisition of slaves were not insignificant contributors to the master's coffers either. The order was continuously boosted by the acquisition of properties and materials either by force, donation or their abandonment after warfare so that the hospitalers, although never quite as rich as their reputation promised amongst outsiders, were able to profitably manage farms, monasteries, markets, bakeries, mills, and inns all over Europe and the Middle East. The Crusades The hospitalers, like other orders such as the Knights Templar, provided a vital few hundred knights to Western Crusader armies, especially from the Third Crusade, 1187 to 1192 AD, onwards when they often formed the flanks of armies on the battlefield. Indeed, the great Muslim leader Saladin offered a bounty to any man who took a hospitaler prisoner, such was their importance to the Crusader armies. The order also continued its important role in offering medical attention to those who needed it. One of the first castles given to the order to help fulfill its function of protecting crusader-held territory in the Middle East was Beth Jiblin, aka Beit Jibrin, near Jerusalem in 1136 AD by King Fulk of Jerusalem. They famously had a garrison at Croc de Chevaliers, the massive castle in Syria given to the order in 1144 AD, which they extensively remodeled, it fell to the Mamluks in 1271 AD. Another important hospitaler castle in Syria was Markup, aka Margit, in the order's hands from 1186 AD, and to which they added the massive tower keep. In all, the hospitalers came to control some 25 castles in the Middle East, many of which guarded important coastal areas and land routes. The hospitalers were a key component of the Fourth Crusade, 1202-1204 AD, and although they were involved in the unsuccessful defense of Acre in 1291 AD, the order was credited with helping many refugees escape to the safety of Cyprus. Regular campaigns followed against the Ottoman Empire from the 14th century AD. In 1344 AD the Hospitallers were part of the Papal League which captured Izmir, and in 1365 AD they attacked Alexandria. There were also many setbacks, notably the disastrous invasion of the despotate of Epiros, 1376-1381 AD, and the defeated crusade of 1396 AD. For the hospitalers, though, they would prove to be resilient enough to survive the catalogue of failures of the later crusades and they continued to enjoy their status as a powerful international agency of profit and war. Another consequence of the move to Rhodes was that it led to the hospitalers becoming much more of a naval-based military order. Treated as second-class citizens, many of the locals would end up as rowers in the order's galley ships. Thanks to the relocation, too, from 1310 AD, members were often now referred to as simply the Knights of Rhodes. Despite the tensions, though, Rhodes prospered under hospitaler rule and, while the Ottoman Empire spread ever wider, the island remained one of the last Christian outposts in the Aegean. By the mid-15th century AD, the hospitalers could boast some 450 knights and 2,000 militia on the island. Further afield, the hospitalers continued to manage a network of priories across Europe, and the order was further boosted by the demise of the Knights Templar, whose properties were given over to the hospitalers in 1312 AD. The Hospitallers and the Byzantine Empire The hospitalers had a close relationship with the Byzantine Empire, with an outpost in the capital Constantinople, Emperor Manuel I. Comnenos, R. 1143-1180 AD, for example, employed the order's prior as a diplomatic envoy. The order helped to restore John V. Paleologos, R. 1341-1391 AD, to the throne and received the gratitude of his son and successor Emperor Manuel II, R. 1391-1425 AD. 
Then, as the Byzantines continued to struggle to hold on to their empire, Corinth and the Peloponnese of Greece was sold off to the Hospitallers in 1397 AD, although they only held on to it until the Ottomans conquered the region in 1403 AD. Perhaps in response to the gift of Corinth, practical military assistance was provided and the Knights joined Manuel II's campaign against the Ottomans and their fortress at Riva on the Black Sea in 1399 AD. Relocation, Malta The Ottomans, eager to once and for all remove the Christian thorn from the Mediterranean flank of their empire, attacked Rhodes in 1455 AD and again in 1480 AD. It was to be third time lucky in 1522 AD, and the Hospitallers were, once again, obliged to look elsewhere for their permanent headquarters. After brief pauses on Sicily and on the Italian mainland, in 1530 AD, the order this time chose Malta as their new home, given to them by the King Charles V of Spain, 1516-1556 AD. Thus, the members were now referred to as the Knights of Malta. The Ottomans followed them there, too, but this time the attack was rebuffed in 1565 AD. Malta was not so great for agriculture, only cotton and cumin being notable sources of revenue, but the island did have one of the best harbors in the Mediterranean. Quite what the 12,000 Arab-speaking peasantry on Malta, and the 5,000 on neighboring Gozo, made of their new overlords we can but imagine. The 16th century AD also saw the Hospitallers on campaign against the Moors in North Africa, but the general health of the order was in decline. The wave of religious fervor brought on by the Crusades was long since passed and recruitment became a problem. Indeed, in such places as the Iberian Peninsula, the order became embroiled in conflicts between rival Christian kingdoms. The old days of a holy war against a clearly identifiable enemy of Christianity and the prospect of a surer place in heaven for those who fought them was over. So too, the management of the vast network of estates across Europe was far from efficient, and a lack of proper supervision led to widespread corruption, nepotism, and wastage of funds and resources. With the disappearance of the very reasons why the order had been established in the first place, a transformation was inevitable. The Hospitallers, and their island retreats of Rhodes and then Malta had lasted longer than anywhere else as bastions of medieval chivalry, but eventually, even there, modernity caught up with the order. Even the order's role as a provider of hospitals was largely superseded by institutions run by local councils and the Hospitallers' traditional role as a guardian of pilgrims was less in demand as fewer and fewer Westerners made the long and arduous journey to the Muslim-controlled Holy Land.